Today, we will finally find out how powerful my DIY solar generator, which is based on NASA's billion dollar James Webb telescope design, really is. And I can tell you, the results will surprise you. Just in case you haven't seen the first video yet, you might want to check it out first before watching this. Because then, you'll not only understand why some of the mirrors look like they're broken, but I also asked you guys what you would have done differently. Turned out it was a lot. Over 1,700 comments full of tips, ideas and even detailed improvement plans. Of course, it's impossible to go over each and every single one of them, so instead I've listed the top 5 most talked about ideas. Let's just tackle them one by one, while we test the capabilities of this giant mirror. For the test, I filled a bucket with 20 liters of water and added two temperature sensors. One to keep track of the temperature of the collector plate and the other one to measure the water temperature. I've also added a little timer display to keep track of time while testing. So, with all that set up and running, let's test if the pump also works as expected and make sure there are no leakages. Nothing seems to be dripping as far as I can see, so I think we're good. Hold up, something's leaking. Okay, turns out I forgot to tighten one of the fittings. So, a quick fix luckily. There's just one last thing we need to do before our mirror can start turning water into steam. That's to make sure all 18 mirrors are aligned properly. And we could do that outside here in the heat of the sun, of course. But you guys suggested a much better idea. And that was to use a laser to align the mirrors instead. So I took the mirror off its base, put it on my workbench, made sure it was level and hung the laser pointer on a string from the ceiling. But I quickly found out it wasn't as easy as it seemed it would be. The problem is that the laser pointer has to be moved multiple times to align each mirror. And with 18 mirrors to align, that's definitely not ideal. What we actually need is a laser pointer with a dot big enough to cover the entire mirror. But that doesn't exist, of course. Unless, hold up. I think I might have a solution for that. Now, before I turn this thing on and show you what it does, I want to test the sun tracking mechanism with the four LDRs the mirror is going to use. Because quite a few of you were concerned about the precision of it and suggested programming the coordinates of the sun's position in the sky instead. And while I do agree that that would indeed be the most precise option, the whole idea of tracking the sun with the four LDRs was to keep this whole setup as cheap and simple as possible. But after so many of you mentioned it, I did start to worry a little bit. So, let's see if this simple design is good enough or not. I've tested the setup on two different occasions. First, a cloudy day. And, as you would expect, it doesn't really know what to do. So, for cloudy days, this clearly isn't the best way to go. But, with a clear blue sky, It aims towards the sun without hesitation. However, if we take a closer look, we can see that it's still not perfectly in line, because we can see a shadow cast by the partitions in the top left corner. So, what it looks like is that even with a bit of shade cast over the sensor, the light is bright enough for the sensor to output its maximum value. But I think I've got a way to fix that. I printed a sleeve to block the light that is coming from other directions than the sun directly. Let's see if it makes any difference. 
By the way, for everyone who wants to tinker with this design, there is a link in the video description where you can find all the files for this project. And in case you need any parts like the collector plate for example, I can highly recommend using PCBWay services. Ordering is super easy, they deliver fast, their quality is outstanding and it's more affordable than you think. I personally love to use their services. To make it even easier for you, there is a discount code in the video description. But be quick as it's only available for the first 10 people that use it. Ok, where were we? Oh right, we were testing the sleeve on the sun tracking mechanism. Ok, no shadows cast by the partitions, so perfect. Time to align those mirrors. With our new contraption of course. What does this thing do? I've glued a high power red LED in the bottom of this 3D printed housing and mounted a magnifying glass on top, which bundles the light from the LED into one giant red dot the size of a mirror. This should make aligning them much easier. And remember these, quite a few of you mentioned that 3D printed springs weren't going to hold up because of the heat. Well, today is the day we'll finally find out. Now, if you remember the first video, you might have spotted something isn't the same anymore. And if you did, you're probably right. In the first video, the collector plate was mounted in the center of the mirror. And my idea was to use a smaller secondary mirror to focus the sunlight from the 18 mirrors back onto the collector plate. But, as quite a few of you pointed out, that mirror then of course needs to withstand the same extreme heat the collector plate would endure, which can quickly rise to a few hundred degrees. And because I couldn't think of a way to do that that would fit the rest of this DIY build, I decided to ditch that mirror and mount the collector plate directly in place instead. So, with all the mirrors aligned perfectly, we can finally start testing. There's just one last thing that needs to be done, and it was mentioned a lot in the comments. And that's to paint the collector plate black, so it will absorb the heat more instead of reflecting it back. And with that done, it's finally time to point this mirror towards the sun to get our first test results and find out how powerful it really is. Ok, so it's quite windy today, but the sun is shining bright. The outside temperature is 18 degrees, and the temperature of the water currently is 22.6 degrees. Time to see how fast our mirror can make this water boil. Remember I said it was windy today? Well, after about half an hour, disaster struck. And I should have seen this coming after I moved the weight of the collector plate from behind the pivot point to in front of it. But before I start fixing this thing up again, let's take a look at the data we've got so far to see if it's even worth putting it back together. So the starting temperature of the water was 22.6 degrees. And when the mirror tipped over after 32 minutes, the temperature was 44.2 degrees. That means a temperature increase of 21.6 degrees in just over half an hour, for 20 liters of water. Now, if we do the math, which equals 20,000 grams by 21.6 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree. So, the total energy added is 1,803,840 joules. We did that in 32 minutes, or 1,952 seconds. That gives us a power output of roughly 924 watts, which is just under 1 kilowatt. And that from a DIY solar mirror with only 1.31 square meters of reflective surface. That means this thing outputs about 705 watts per square meter. And that's including all real world losses from the cheap materials, imperfect tracking, etc. So, conclusion. It may not look like much, but with a power output of around 924 watts, or 51 watts per mirror, it turns out to be way more efficient than I expected. So, what's next? Rebuild this one and give it another try? Or build a final, fully automatic, weatherproof version with some proper mirrors? Let me know in the comments below.